Okay, so we're going to have a look at the next video in the organic year 12 GCSE organic topic. Okay, so uh, this one is on alcohols. We've moved on from the last one, which was uh, on alkenes. Then we moved into uh, the use of alkenes to make polymers, in addition polymerization. This is a whole new functional group or homologous series now in alcohols. So just to uh, keep you abreast of where you should be up to now in your in your notes. Uh, we are on page, uh, let me just check, 21, okay, so page 21, uh, that is in your class notes, okay, and the alcohols part of that will run to page uh, 23, so you should be able to um, make sure by the end of this uh, topic you have got all those uh, spaces filled in and that you've also got any of the reading done that's associated with that make sure that you've got that done as well in terms of your textbook i am starting here on our starts on page um 206 this is for the textbook if you want to make a little note of this and that runs through then to uh, page 210 so again please make sure that you have a go and any of the little test yourself questions that are in there okay they're very useful to do and you uh, should get those marked also so if you i'm going to clear that off the board if you want to write those paid references down before i do hit pause there and then i'm going to move on okay so alcohols are a whole new homology series and a whole new functional group what you'll notice now is that these are no longer hydrocarbons because they contain uh, an OH group. They've got this thing called a functional group, okay, which is the group or a group of atoms which give the uh, compound its chemical uh, properties. So the carbon-carbon double bond was the functional group in our alkenes that we did previously. And now you can see here, hopefully, in our alcohols, our functional group, and I'll just highlight it here for you. Okay, our functional group is the COH, and all alcohols have got COH. And you'll see when we write the formula of them, the molecular formula, we always have you can recognize them by the presence of that OH in there. Okay, now there are a uh, couple of them that you uh, well three of them that you have to know the formulas of so these are the ones here structure formulas so you will be asked to be able to to draw this you'll be asked for the this is the molecular I suppose. just remind yourself that is the molecular formula okay now in terms of naming them we follow some of the some pretty much the same rules as we followed previously but a couple of differences right so in this alcohol here we have one carbon therefore meth likewise here two carbons so eth exactly same as our alkanes and our alkenes this is all single bonds you can see all single carbon carbon bonds in it so there is meth an an okay now this time it's an alcohol and the ending of alcohols as in the name of alcohols when we see this oh group present is all so we put all those things together meth for the length of the carbon chain and for the fact that it's only carbon carbon single bonds and all for the fact that it's an alcohol and that OH group is present. Okay, again you have to know the physical state of these. Unlike our alkanes and our alkenes, which were all uh, gases, these have higher boiling points, higher melting points, and they are liquids at room temperature. Okay, so those are two. This is the third one you have to know, and I've given it a slide on its own because it's a little bit different. Again, if we look at it, we have one, two, three carbons, so it is of course. Hopefully you're getting to know this by now. Prop, it's all carbon-carbon single bonds. It's prop an, and we have an OH group, COH group one, so it's propanol. Now, if you look at these, both of these are the same, but the OH group, the functional group, and this one is on the end carbon, so number one carbon. Remember, we always label from the side where we can give it the lowest number. Okay. Whereas this one has our OH group in the middle, and of course, if it's in the middle, that must be number two carbon now this means that these two molecules while it's very very similar uh, are different so they have they both have um c3h7oh so we've got the same molecular formula but their structure is different and therefore this one 
it's called one on the left here is called propand one all remember the hyphens on either side must be there for you to get the marks this one then propand two all so again the hyphens must be there and the number two just tells me which carbon my uh, my OH is on so if you were given the name and asked to draw it you should draw that if you're given this name and you're asked to draw it you should draw that so just as a little bit of practice I'd like you to if I give you a couple here okay so if I asked you to draw let's go down the line of butane one all and let's go down the line of butane two all so maybe you want to draw those pause the video there draw them and then I put them on the board and you can check that you're right so pause the video now so we have but we should know is now four carbons so we'll do four carbons in both of them one means that my OH group is on position number one now I can do that either on that carbon or I can do it on that carbon it doesn't matter as long as it's on the end and then all you got to do really simple is draw in your hydrogens exactly the same thing here put in all your hydrogens you put those in in an exam I'm not going to here just to save a bit of time my OH group there or alternatively you can have your OH group there because if I label that way that's number two if I label that way that's number two so either or it doesn't matter okay so hopefully you're able to get those pretty straightforward okay so how do we make ethanol you need to know how we make this and we looked at this actually if you could remember back uh, whenever we did our alkenes and um, so we've actually done the chemistry of this one before so this is hydration and if you remember I spoke about hydration and I said it was the adding of water some people confuse it a little bit with hydrogen which is hydrogenation two similar words but they mean very different things and we do, we do this by making it taking ethane reacting it with a catalyst of phosphoric acid and we get pure ethanol so this is not a way that you would make ethanol for beer or wine or anything like that that's made by fermentation of uh, sugars fruit sugars Okay. this is for making pure ethanol which would be used as a solvent in the pharmaceutical industry in the perfumes industry as a cleaning material things like that pure pure ethanol okay the other way of making ethanol is and some of your parents may do this at home if they make their own wine or their own beer is via fermentation okay and this is a much is a natural way of making through biochemical reactions and we use yeast as a microorganism and that converts the sugar the sugar which is in um what might be in any fruit so for example if i'm wine making the sugar comes from uh, grapes okay and that turns that the yeast has the ability to turn that sugar into ethanol it also produces carbon dioxide so when you do make this ethanol by this way you'll see it sort of frothing up and bubbling up that's the carbon dioxide being produced uh, and it happens when it's warm about 37 degrees but in a round it doesn't have to be it just has to be warm okay now this is a bit different because you get an impure product this time but you're not really after a pure product when you're making wine or beer anyway although to get ethanol out of it which you can do and plenty of places do do this uh, you simply distill your eth ethanol and you collect the fraction I think ethanol boils at about 50 at 60 degrees off the top of my head but so that's how you get your pure ethanol from that but this is, is a, a second way of making ethanol this way is particularly uh, used in uh, hot countries where they have lots of things like sugar cane and, and sugar beet which is a uh, material that they can turn into ethanol and they can actually use ethanol as a fuel for their cars the thing called gasohol which is about 10 15 20 percent ethanol which is a huge a huge saving on uh, diesel and petrol if you can make your fuel from a, a renewable resource like sugar okay effects of ethanol you need to be able to just have a few of these in your armory guys to uh, answer questions about sort of pros and cons of ethanol in terms of alcoholic drinks <clears throat> so obviously big problems with addiction drink driving alcoholism leading to depression violence especially domestic violence and violence uh, in your streets okay uh, heart disease liver damage in particular okay brain damage as well the brain is protect brain is actually the most susceptible organ to alcohol abuse even though you tend to find uh, liver uh, damage gets more press okay so
So all of those things, have a, have a sort of a, an idea of being able to talk about two or three of those in an exam question. Okay, right, let's look at reactions of alcohol. Combustion, now we should be getting sort of old hands at combustion by now. Okay, ethanol, if you remember, are, are alkanes right away back at the start. I know it's a long time ago now. But our alkanes, they, they all burn to give us carbon dioxide and water, provided it's um, complete combustion. Remember, our alkane, it burned with a fairly plain uh, yellow flame. Remember, our alkene then, it burned with a very sooty uh, and a more orange coloured flame. Okay, much more likely to undergo incomplete combustion. Alcohol is burned with a nice blue flame. Some of you may have seen on TV or at home where brandy was thrown over a Christmas pudding and it was lit and it burned with a, a very clean blue flame. Sometimes the flame is so clean uh, you can't actually see it, which can be quite dangerous. People have burnt themselves on ethanol flames where they haven't actually been able to see the flame so it's a nice clean blue flame much more likely to undergo complete combustion uh, and i'm just wondering if we took a look at ethanol for example could you maybe just pause the video and think of why would you get a nice clean why do you get more complete combustion with ethanol than you get with any of the ones that we've spoken about so far well, the answer is that ethanol itself has got some oxygen built into it, if you like. So it's much more likely to go undergo complete combustion, complete oxidation than the other ones that we have spoken about, okay, which rely on oxygen coming from an external source. Right, the second reaction of oxidation that you are sorry, of alcohols you need to be able to talk about is of oxidation. Now, this can happen in a couple of ways. It can happen from just oxygen sitting around in the air. So maybe if your mum and dad had a bottle of wine, uh, they wouldn't let it sit around. They would put the, well, they'd probably drink it, but they'd uh, put the cork back in it, and that's to prevent air getting into that bottle. Because if you oxidise, allow oxygen in, and you oxidise the ethanol, the drinking alcohol in that bottle, it turns to a, a very sort of bitter, acidic taste. So that's to be avoided, okay? Ethanol itself, if it's, that's drinking alcohol is oxidised, it goes to ethanoic acid, which is the ingredient, the active ingredient that gives vinegar that very sharp taste. So obviously you want to you want to avoid that. Now, oxidation also happens via a chem it can be speeded up and happen by a, a chemical route. And you need to know uh, the chemical that is used here, and that chemical is on the board now, it's called acidified potassium dichromate, and you must keep the term acidified in there and it'll turn it again into a carboxylic acid, okay? Now, you need to be able to talk about the products of oxidation of the alcohols. And remember, they go to carboxylic acids, which we, we will do in our next video, by the way. So this might sound a bit odd to you at the minute, but you'll learn a bit more about carboxylic acids. So if I oxidize ethanol, it goes to ethanoic acid. If I oxidize methanol, methanoic acid. Propanol, propanoic acid and butanol, butanoic acid. So very simple, those are the carboxylic acid products of the oxidation of those four alcohols, which you will need to, to know. Right, tests for alcohols. Now, if you remember in our last topic, we did tests, okay, for, uh, if we had a little test tube with, uh, I'll just remind you of it, an alkene, and another one with an alkene in it, and we weren't sure which was which. If you can remember, we added bromine water to both of them, and in the alkene, the orangey brown bromine water stayed orange brown. And in the alkene, the orange brown bromine water got decolorized and went colorless. So that was our test to tell the difference between an alkene and an alkene. Now, how do we identify chemically then uh, alcohol? Well, we use acidified potassium dichromate, which will oxidize alcohols. And if we have an alcohol, that acidified potassium dichromate, which is orange, will turn green. Okay, so if you add acidified potassium dichromate to a liquid and it turns from orange to green with a bit of warming as well, I suppose you should have put that in there. With a bit of warming, then you can be confident at GCSE that that is indeed an alcohol. Okay. Now that is a reaction which was used originally in breathalyzers. So you used to blow through into the breathalyzer if you had too much alcohol in your breath.
the breathalyzer or the liquid in the breathalyzer, which was the acidified potassium dichromate, went from orange to green and then you were brought down to the police station where you were further analysed using a technique called infrared spectroscopy, which gives you a much more accurate measure of the amount of alcohol within someone's blood, okay? Because alcohol is very good at absorbing infrared radiation. And if you breathed into the infrared spectroscopy machine, that would have, the more alcohol in your breath, the more of the infrared radiation that it would absorb, and therefore the machine could measure the amount of alcohol in your breath, okay? So let's have a look at that reaction for the um, the uh, oxidation, sorry. So we should get a wee uh, colour change coming and up here. Of the contents of the flask and what will happen. Uh, unfortunately, we'll also get a... Sorry guys, I can't come to lunch. So in that flask at the minute, we've got an alcohol, okay? with acidified potassium dichromate. The alcohol is colourless, but acidified potassium dichromate is on it. So we're going to warm it, and this is the sort of observation that you will see, that you'll be able to describe very, very briefly. See, quite simple. So there you go. You can see the, the alcohol has turned to that green colour with the acidified potassium dichromate. And that's an identification then that we can say within that flask, we did indeed have an alcohol, okay? And you can see at the top right hand corner, that's just a, a little diagram uh, that you can see the two colours before and after. So uses of alcohols, drinks, obviously wine and beer, that's where alcohol is uh, used massively. It's used in a solvent, especially perfumes. The beauty of alcohol is if you, if you put some pure alcohol in your skin, it will evaporate very quickly. If there's perfume, fragrance, molecules dissolved in that, the alcohol evaporates off your skin and leaves no trace but leaves the perfume molecules behind so you have that scent with you okay a, a fuel okay it's mixed with petrol and diesel it's not used really as a fuel a pure fuel in cars on its own it's mixed with petrol or diesel okay okay right so that is uh, the alcohols part done guys um again i've told you earlier uh, that your questions and your uh, textbook will run from page 206 through to page 210 so please do those textbook questions um, I'll just write them down here again for you so 206 to 210 in your textbook so it would be a really good idea if you would go and uh, make sure that you do those and then in your class notes um, I think it was page 21 23 so in your class notes uh, class notes we'll just write this page 21 to 23 you'll see the heading for alcohols anyway even if the page reference doesn't exactly match yours so i would suggest you maybe go away and have a go at those guys all right there you go that was a much shorter one than previously so hopefully you understand that okay and we'll move on to the carboxylic acids in the next video